Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today we have an X370 Gaming Plus. This is an AM4 board. As you can see, this is defective. And this seems to be not the only one that the seller has. And this is the first time I bought off of a company seller, not just someone privately selling. This board was advertised as not working, not booting, for whatever reason. Um, they had a very ge ge generic description in there, the, the socket might be defected, there might be water damage or whatever, whatever. And we're today going to find out what is wrong with this board. I specifically bought this board because I have one of these boards with physical damage, very heavy physical damage, where the board boots up with only an APU and none of the PCIe is working, none of the SATA is working and only some of the USB are working. So I want to fix this board up and then use this to fix the other board up to be able to compare it to the other one. And if that doesn't work to have at least, if, if I can't get this working, I at least have some things that I can compare to the other one. But let's see what this board does. Physically it looks in um, decent condition. One thing I've already noticed is at the slot, you can see scratch marks there on the PCIe slot, but that should be fine. We're going to build this board up, I think, instantly, and we're going to see how this behaves. So I'm going to be using an APU again in here. I'm going to be using the 2200G that I have. So now we have everything built up and now let's see, we're going to turn the power supply on and oh, I forgot to uh, connect my clamps again. And now let's see for the power consumption. That is very bad. That is very, very high power consumption. Hmm. Oh, I've just noticed something. I've just noticed that there are pin headers on the bottom here and on the bottom here that are bent out of place. Let me show you that. If you could see right here, these are completely bent down, but they're not touching anything. There's another pin right here that is bent outwards. Let's show you the, these again. Um, but none of these look like they should be touching anything or should be a problem to be honest any heavy damage on the backside or anything. Um, the big thing is that we have very high um, passive power consumption. So that would be something where I would expect that um, the 5 VSB is shorted somewhere. Um, or the 3 VSB, one of those two. One of the things, it could always be the PCH. But we need to find out what it actually is. Let's see now. We're going to turn it on. The power consumption is high. Let's see if this reacts to the power button at all. And it does not. Okay, that was to be expected. The Super IO is not getting hot. The three VSB is also not getting hot. It's because that's the free VSB MOSFET. Yeah, my tester gets hot. Like warm, it gets very hot at one point. Okay, <laughs> yeah, the five VSB on my tester got very very hot and you can kill your tester actually with that and you need to be careful of that I don't know which one which component it was exactly but my uh, one of the regulators got burning hot where I actually just burnt my finger <laughs> I don't know if you can see that probably not visible but there's a speck right there it's a little bit visible yeah I burnt myself right there um, let's check the the slot on the 24 pin for shorts. So let's see now. 5 VSB on the 24 pin should be, I think, one of these two, the third and the fourth one. I just realized I made a very rookie mistake. I confused the 5 VSB for PS on voltage. So this pin, the fourth pin that I was seeing here, um, that has high resistance, that is PS on and not 5 VSB. 5 VSB is the fourth pin from here. And as you can see, this pin, oh, you can't see. And now, <laughs> as you can see, this pin has basically zero. 
this makes it a lot of lo lot more sense because before I was like, okay, how do we have that high of a power consumption when we have like kilo ohms that that cannot be, and now it does start to make sense with having zero and having that kind of uh, co power consumption. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to go be going over to volta voltage injection. So we're going on to one volt. I'm going to be starting with that. I'm going to be using my tweezers with the power supply attached to them. And let's see, at one volt we already have over an amp. And it was rising very rapidly and quickly. So something must be burning. Like the shot just got worse. Because it continued to draw more amps. I will need to get the, the camera because I don't want to inject for a long time that kind of voltage and damage anything. Well, the voltage that I inject is not a problem, but having that much current pass through there is quite insane to be honest. I'm going to have a look at what is on our 5 VSB line. And oh, let's say we're going to have a look. Let's get our board view out. And let's see, as you can see, we have five VSB here. This is a capacitor, nothing, nothing important. There's something here that is five volts VSB with the piece on. That is a, that is a linear voltage regulator for three VSB as far as it seems. And there's another voltage regulator. This also seems like a, yeah, this is for the SIO volt. So let's go. Uh, back onto our overview and let's check some of these regulators and now let's check um, this regulator right there regulator seems also be fine let's check this regulator this is for the SIO voltage and let's check around the SIO but this also looks fine cannot seem to find any shorts on the SIO. I'm just going around big capacitors around the SIO to see if there's anything there getting uh, which has low resistance. But none of these seem to have a problem with that. So um, what we're going to do next is I'm going to get uh, the thermal camera. We're going to start to inject voltage again and we're going to see how it will behave or what we can see what gets hot. So we now have our power supply attached to my probe and we have the thermal camera and now I'm going to inject the voltage and let's see. And I think we found our culprit. This is at 50 degrees right now and let's if I increase the voltage it heats up very, very quickly. So I think we have a capacitor that is shorted around the audio IC. Because look at this. I'm going to, you see my finger, I'm going to increase the voltage and let's see here. You see that? Let's go under the microscope and see for that capacitor and it seems to be our little friend over here this capacitor here very very interesting i've never had a shorted capacitor on a main board before and then even around the audio i see that is very re weird so let's quickly see if we can desolder that cap and get rid of it or get it out of place and then test it Let's see now what we're going to do is we're going to get some solder on both of its sides. So we have solder there. What we're now going to do, I'm going to use the hot air station and I'm going to be using my tweezers to just uh, pick it out of position. So 
So now the capacitor is not on its place anymore. It's not connected to ground and to the supply voltage of that chip anymore. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get our overview and our overview for the power supply. And as you can see now, at five volts, like it should at VSB, we have a little bit of power consumption. So, so that actually was our short circuit right there. I cannot believe it. So let's see now. Um, I'm going to build this board back up and let's see if this starts working now. And right now, let's see together. I'm going to connect the clump and for standby voltage, we still have way too much. Damn. That is very bad. <laughs> I was very confident there for a while. I'm actually kind of... Huh. That is very weird. We still had very high power consumption on 5 VSB. I didn't check if the short was gone because I was like, yeah, I've removed the capacitor and I didn't have any more power consumption when I connected up the power supply. So I thought we would be good already. But let's see again. Yeah, the resistance is fine actually on 5 VSB. But there seems to be yet another problem somewhere. Very interesting. I will... What will I do? Um, I will probably... I'm kind of scared because of uh, my power supply blowing up like my... Um, my tester, uh, but there shouldn't be any more standby voltages that should be shorted from the beginning on, or that could be shorted from the beginning on. And right now, you can see me using something else than before. We are using a power supply, an ATX power supply actually, because I think my regulator actually died. Yeah, what can I say? The 5 VSB was shorted so, so badly that my regulator got overdrawn and it killed my regulator. Well, my 12 volt adapter. And the 5 VSB was always shorted on that now. Um, there seems to be no other short on this main board anymore. We actually can power up, but the thing is we're stuck on CPU right now. This could either be related that the CPU isn't recognized by either a broken BIOS or that there's some knockoff components or that this CPU is just not compatible with the BIOS that is on there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch this up a little bit. And let's see, this is now the 3000G that has also no reaction. It has also CPU light. So now we're going to go over to the 2600. This is the 3500. And let's see if this also isn't recognized. I would guess that there's physical damage, uh, a knocked off resistor or something like that any, uh, somewhere around the CPU socket. And no, there's not because the 2600X is booting. But we don't have a VGA device in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off by the power supply because my hand was getting burning hot. So what we're going to do, let's connect this and we're going to connect this. We need a VGA output. So we're going to use my small little tester graphics card right here. And let's connect this up. And now let's attach it to the first PCIe slot right here. And let's see. Uh, we're going to, we don't need that anymore, the power supply, because it's sadly dead. So we're going to turn this on and we're going to be hitting this button right there. And we had a quick turn on and then turn off again. Let's see this again. We have no reaction to the power button right now. Let's drain this. We're going to be holding the power button down. And we want to drain. Um, the VSB line on the power supply. 
and can actually check that with the PCIe tester. And now it's strange. Now it's on again and let's see. And it instantly went into protection mode because of the C uh, GPU that we've put in here. Very interesting. So let's now see. Um, we're going to be connecting it in a different slot. Let's connect it in this slot right here. And now we need to drain the VSB again. And now our three VSB is drained. And uh, now it's turning on. So there, there might be something wrong with our uh, first PCIe slot also as well, because it had pro it instantly restarted or not restarted, but it instantly shut off as soon as we had something plugged in there. And um, I would expect to have picture by now, because we have AF and we have no posts uh, going any on, on there anymore. The CPU is getting warm, and but we don't have keyboard recognition as well which is very weird let's see if we go into a different usb slot we still have no recognition of that huh i would expect the board by now to be on there seems to be still something wrong here let's try this again let's restart the board as you can see the leds are running you cannot see them let me quickly change this but we have no post and let's do that again now you can see the LED is going right there but after the second one of the DRAM it already shuts off interesting so let's turn this, uh, this off completely because also the PCH has no heatsink on it and it's get quite getting quite warm let's assemble the heatsink for the PCH first again to be very sure that we don't blow that up because of no heatsink um, for that I need to disconnect everything and I'm going to see you as soon as I have that built up again. So and right now everything's built up. We have the heatsink on there as well. Let's turn this on once more. Postcodes are running. And the LEDs. And let's see now. We can get a boot out of this thing. So we have a very interesting case here. As you can see I'm right now in the BIOS Flasher Neo programmer. And what I was, um, I was about to flash a BIOS onto here and I've encountered something. So I've now loaded up a BIOS that I downloaded from um, the MSI page. And what I wanted to do is to program this and verify this. And when I hit write IC with write and verify, we get an arrow on this bit here. Verification error on address at device at the buffer and I've tried this multiple times my connection is good because the IC reads the IC erases but I cannot write to this bit anymore and this bit actually has some information in it as far as it seems with F0 which is not 00, zero uh, yeah which is not just with 00, zero so that backs the question of whether the the BIOS chip is actually faulty. And I can verify that because I have the same board with a known good working BIOS chip. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap, swap the BIOS chips over and we're going to see if that finally brings this ba board back to life. And right now you can see the changed out chip. The chip that we had before was this one and the now in place chip is this one. These are two different chips. One is Winbond, one is MXIC. Um, I do not know if this works actually. I've checked the data sheet. This is also a 1.8 volt chip, just like that one. They have the same memory capacity and they seem to be the same, just from different vendors. So I think this should be fine. This has a known good BIOS on it. And this one was the one that I couldn't verify. As you can see, there are still the jumpers on here. And let's now together find out if we can chip uh, swap out these chips just like that. Because I've taken this chip from this uh, from the exact same model of mainboard, also X370 Gaming Plus. And right now our board is fully built up. Sadly, this time with a normal ATX power supply that you can see in the bottom left there. Because as I said before, my adapter sadly died. The 5 VSB on it died because of this shorted capacitor that we had right here. But I will try to fix that for 
other videos and what we're going to do now is we're now going to see if this has worked i've now placed into here a different cpu what i've placed is the 2000g and we have connected vga and let's also get the screen on there we're still going to be looking at the postcodes here and let's see if it now works with a different bios chip on here so it now starts up and we get some postcodes that's a very good sign because that means we're accessing the bios and it looks very good we have re resetting as you can see by the leds so that means also our cpu has been recognized I sadly can't show you the power consumption anymore like we had before, but this looks very promising. This is now on boot and VGA, I think. We still don't have a picture yet. Let me connect a keyboard so that I could see if we have any activity on there. And we have keyboard connectivity. That's a very good sign because we have actually um, numlock on our keyboard. It is able to be turned on and off as you can see this is the connected keyboard and it turns on and off and let's see now i'm going to hit um f10 and enter to save the bios i hope this works right here and let's see if we can yeah we got a reboot as you can see and let's see if we can get any picture out of this apu right now because currently we have nothing on our screen. So the board is on, but we don't have anything on our DVI. Let's switch to HDMI and see if we can get a signal out of that. Let's now restart the board once. And now you can see it is restarting. And let's now see if we get, and there it is. We get a post very very nice so we've learned that you can swap bios chips and that that other bios chip that we had was probably faulty and now this is posting so let's see if we now get anything out of our pcie because that is the big thing i bought this main board mainly because yes i wanted to repair it but other than that is that i wanted to get this board to repair a different board that has non-working PCIe and SATA. So this is now the 2600. And what we're now going to do is we're going to put on this heatsink again. And instead of connecting to its onboard HDMI, we're going to be connecting through our video card. So Let's connect not into this slot because this slot was making problems. Let's connect it to this slot here. And now let's try once more turning the power supply on and hitting the power button. We now also get postcodes as you can see. And we have uh, the post LEDs running. Let's see now. If we can get a signal and there it is that's very good so the PCIe on this one is working as well and that's a very good sign so that means that um, I will be able to use this board to diagnose the other board and see why that one isn't working and we are resetting in BIOS right now oh there it is yeah and there is the BIOS screen that's very good. Let's now test the lower lowest slot and then we're going to see why in this slot it shuts off automatically. Let's now turn it off and I will be placing the GPU one slot lower. Now it's turning back on and now we also have picture out of the lowest slot and let's now see together why it is not wanting to start if we putting it in the top slot so let's see well one one thing that I can already say is I saw some physical damage around the slot but let's tr uh, verify this so we're putting it in and 
now the power supply is on and I'm going to be hitting the power button now. And it doesn't do the thing anymore. Well done. Good to know. It just posts. Okay. So that issue was a no issue to begin with. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be building this board up, going to populate the run, going to get a bigger graphs cut in here, and we're going to test if everything's working on this. And we now have two passes of Linpack. So that ran through. I'm now going to do some tests on the GPU. And now also heaven has passed. And this time we have the RX 460 in here and that the big, big Vega card because as I said my adapter broke and now I can use the setup that I had before. And with that I think this repair comes to an end. Which means this was very interesting to me for me to be honest. I learned something new. I've never had a shorted capacitor on a mainboard before. And the good thing is it was a very easy short to find here. Because this was only uh, a shorted capacitor near the audio I see. So nothing special. The audio is also working on this. So I'm just going to remove that capacitor completely from the board. And it will be fine. There will or won't be any problems with that anymore. And the other thing is that I have never had a broken BIOS chip uh, on a board before. I had many, many broken BIOSes. But never the chip to be faulty like this. Like maybe I have boards that have... Uh, broken chips but I've never had it that I actually could say like in this case that the chip was definitely faulty and was not programmable, programmable anymore and didn't verify anymore so I'm very happy with this repair I, I was able to learn quite a lot and the good thing is I will be able to use this mainboard now to repair the other mainboard that I have to see why the PCIe slots are not working I don't know if I'm going to make a separate video on that if I'm going to find it and I also will have to repair my adapter also and I don't know if I will make a video on that um, but because I don't even know if I can repair it if I can get the chip that it has blown on here and yeah but that was all thank you very much for watching thank you very much for tuning in I hope you learned something and this has been Mainboard Medic thank you very much and goodbye